Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. We all know that animation takes forever, especially end-kid animation. And any trick to speed up the process is always welcome. One thing I never covered here on YouTube are asset libraries and pose libraries. But I've been quite busy lately animating for commercials and trailer, and I'm really thankful I discovered them thanks to my friend Ribbon. If you have to do a lot of lip sync animation or body animation for a show or for a short movie, then it's definitely worth it to build yourself a pose library. You can then hit a pose like a hand pose or a phonem in a single click. Let's check it out. The idea behind asset libraries is to be able to quickly access any Blender's data block and reuse them in your current scene, with, in the best case scenario, a well-organized library. This applies to any data, like objects, materials, HGRI, node modifiers, and in our case, character rigs and animation data. First of all, how can we create an asset library? As a first example, I will use this cube, I will create a custom material, a simple red material, and I will call this cube, cube red. We can create a new window on the side and access the asset browser. By default, Blender will show me all the assets available. I haven't created any asset yet, but we see all those brushes. These are some combing and grease pencil custom brushes that are shipped with Blender as essential assets. But if we take a look at the assets stored in the current Blender file, there is nothing. To add the data to the asset library, it's very simple. You just right click on it and choose mark as asset. And the material will appear in my asset library. I can do the same with an object like the cube by right-clicking on it and choosing Mark as Asset. If I want to get rid of an asset, I simply right-click on it and choose Clear Asset. The easiest way to use an asset is to simply drag and drop it in your 3D view or in any relevant editor window. By default, assets stored in the asset library are local, local to the current Blender file. To access them in any Blender session, we first need to save the file. I will call it Material Library. Now, where to place this Blender file to access it at any time? Let's check out our preferences. Go to File Path and under Asset Library, you will see that there is an existing asset library called User Library, and we can see where it's stored. So the first solution is to place our Material Library Blender file into that folder. If I now reopen Blender and open the Asset Browser, I can now find my red material in the user library. Or a more convenient way, in my opinion, is to add a new Asset Library folder. Go to Edit, Preferences, open File Path, and under Asset Library, click the plus icon. You can now search for the folder where you stored your Blender file including the asset libraries. I will use that character library folder as an example. In this folder, I have a couple of Blender files, including Kivali and the mannequin rig, with different data marked as assets. So if I now open my character library, I can see all these assets. We'll see how we can organize them into catalogs a little later on. Before we get started, yes, this character rig will soon be available for free on p2designacademy.com. And if you're liking my content, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. As an example, we're going to create a couple of end poses. Those are super handy, pun intended, to speed up your animation process. Posing hands is super important, at least to me, but it's almost as long as posing the whole body. So taking the time to craft nice hand shape before diving into animation is always a plus. So here I'm on the source blend file of my character. I haven't created any asset yet for this character. I will isolate the hand controllers and I will start posing a fist. 
Once I'm happy with the result, I need to select the controllers used to create that pose and then go to Pose, Create Pose Asset. A window will pop up where you can name the current pose and say where you want to store it. Make sure that you store the pose in the current file, not in the user library, because this pose is specific to this character. And it's a nightmare to organize poses when they are stored somewhere else, while here they are stored with the source character rig. Don't worry about the catalog yet, we'll see that later on. As we confirm, a new asset is stored in the asset library, and it's an action asset. Even though an action is used to store the assets, only the first keyframe will be read. So you're not storing an animation, you're only storing one pose in that action. With that being said, we have another thing to fix is that our pose preview is empty. Now, this fix is specific to pose assets. It won't work with any other asset. First, we need to add a camera. Then in the properties editor, check out your document settings and make sure you're using a square format for your render. From there, position the camera so that you can clearly see the pose you just created. In the pose library, select the pose asset, open the item property by clicking the wrench icon, here you can rename the pose asset and give it more information like a copyright, a license, a description, etc. Under preview, just click the refresh button and Blender will take a snapshot of the current camera view. Now what you need to know about this snapshot is that it's generated using the workbench viewport display. So if you want to change the look of those snapshots, just switch to the workbench as your render engine, make sure you're using material preview, and then just play with the different option. You can use a matcap, you can switch to texture if you have a textured character. And once you're happy with what you have in your 3D view, just hit the update button under the preview. If you want to learn animation, rigging and much more in Blender, discover my extensive courses on p2designacademy.com. Learn actual professional techniques or enjoy all my exclusive free character rigs only on p2designacademy.com. Here I have the same file but I created several poses. But when I try double clicking or drag and drop the pose asset onto my character, nothing happens. This should not be the case by default, but the pose assets are driven by an add-on that is enabled by default. I disabled it just to show you the problem. Again, it's a core Blender add-on that is enabled by default, so you should not have this problem unless you disabled it which can make sense if you're more of a look dev artist and you don't use animation and you want to get rid of all those extra buttons in the interface. If you have available pose assets and you are in pose mode, you can expand this tab in the 3D view showing you all the pose assets available. When no controller is selected, clicking the thumbnail will apply the pose to all the controllers involved in that pose. If you select specific controllers involved in that pose, only those controllers will be posed using the pose asset. If you hold left click and you drag left or right, you can blend between the current pose and the pose from the asset library. This is super powerful. You'll find the same option directly into the pose asset library, but I prefer to get rid of the asset browser and use the library directly in the 3D viewports. Finally, if your rig is symmetrical, you can apply or blend the flipped pose, meaning that you don't need to recreate an asset for each hand. You can perform this by right-clicking to open the menu, or you can control left click to apply the pose, or control left click and hold to blend the pose. All the assets can be organized in different catalogs. You can think of catalogs as assets collection. On the left side of the asset browser, you can create a new catalog. This will be my master catalog, I will call it Kibali. And inside it, I can create sub-catalogs. I will create a catalog for the rig, I will create a catalog for the different pose assets, and 
inside this pose asset catalog, I will create a catalog for the face expression, for the phonem, and one for the hand poses. From there, I can check all the unassigned assets and move them into the catalog I want them to be assigned to. I really advise you to use this extra step, especially if you have multiple characters in your asset library. I did the same with the mannequin rig, and now when I open the asset browser and I go to my character library, I can see all my assets, but I can go in the different catalogs to find specific assets. Another way to improve your assets organization is to use tags. I will assign the tag armature to Kibali's rig, this way, instead of brought things through the different catalogs, I can open the whole catalog and just search for Armature, or I can search for Kibali. I now have a lot of nice asset libraries. I want to use them. So I can open the asset browser. I will select my character library, search for my mannequin rig, and before I drag and drop it into the 3D scene, we need to be very careful with the import method. By default, it will use the one saved in the preferences, and by default, it uses append and reuse. But you may not want to append an armature, you want to link it. So I switch to link, and now when I drag and drop my character rig in the 3D scene, it's like performing a file link. Then, as usual, in the collection, I can right-click on my character collection, go to Library Override and choose Make Selected and Content. And now I can start animating my character. We can try to append the character, but it will append its collection and all the objects that are linked to it, so all the widgets of the rig, and it's a mess. And you can't make an override of its collection when it's appended. So basically, just use link whenever you're using a character asset. If you want to know more about linking in Blender, check out this video. I wanted to make this last part because it's pretty important to understand how and what is keyed in a pose asset. Here we're focusing on Kibali's face in a neutral pose. With no controller selected, if I double click on one of the expression, the involved bone will be posed. So with that bored expression, it kind of works. But if I try the angry expression, you can see some clipping with the teeth. One of the custom property or function of that rig is to be able to lock the mouth with the jaw. And for this pose to work properly, I need to unlock the mouth. So basically all the facial bones were posed, but that custom property wasn't changed. So let's see what exactly a pose asset is. It's basically an action. And when we're creating it, this action is automatically marked as asset. When we check the channels keyed for each controller, we can see we get a lot of channel regardless of what was locked or not on our rig, but it doesn't matter. Blender is keying the custom properties of the selected controller, the B-bone properties, and all its transform channels, but it's only using the current rotation mode. It means that if I change the rotation mode of one of my controller, in that case, the mouth corner from quaternion to Euler rotation. If I now try to apply a pose asset that uses this controller, you can see a difference between both sides of the mouth. Because both controllers in the pose assets are using quaternions, but the one on the right was set to Euler, so it wasn't rotated. So if a pose asset doesn't work, make sure that you're using the same rotation mode on both the asset and your current animation. This was already reported as a bug, even though it's not a bug, so we can hope for a solution from the animation module team at the Blender Studio. The last important thing I want to cover, as we saw before, on this specific character, the face pose may change if we enable or disable mouth lock. So if I want to make sure that this custom property is properly toggled, I will need to select the bone that hold that custom property, in this case the properties bone, and make sure it is selected whenever I'm creating my pose asset. But the problem is and will be on most rigs available, these properties bone hold a lot of properties and all those custom properties will be keyed. Because remember, when creating a pose asset, 
absolutely all the channels of the selected bones are keyed. So in this case, it will also influence the inverse or forward kinematics of the arms, the legs, basically a ton of custom properties that are stored into these properties bone. The workaround is to open the action used as a pose asset and only insert a keyframe on the custom property we wanna toggle. Now, whenever I'm applying this specific pose asset, the custom property will also be triggered. The downside is that if I want to apply this pose to only a specific set of bones, not all the bones involved by selecting them, for example, the jaw bone, if I don't also select the custom property bone, then the custom property won't be toggled. That's technically the expected behavior, but it's really a matter of preferences or personal choice. So whatever your preference is, you may want to let the animator know what method you used, if you keyed the custom prop or if they have to enable or disable it by hand. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.